today we're going to talk about it's a global playground and the importance of paying attention to both emerging markets and leading markets um, because as you'll see you know it's all part of kind of this glowing uh, global this growing global ecosystem so um, Mobile gaming revenue, as we all know, is growing extremely rapidly. The mobile online games um, revenue growth is expected to hit 60 billion by 2017. So um, we all know that mobile is taking over everything. Um, smartphone penetration uh, on a global basis is interesting. It's 30%, which really speaks to kind of the growth of smartphones throughout the world. Um, it's a 20% growth rate. We're seeing that the fastest growing regions are China, India, Brazil, and Indonesia. Um, and then tablet growth. Tablet growth is over 50% last year in 2013, faster than PCs have ever been. I think this still all speaks to kind of how uh, the mobile tablet market is, is taking over for the PC in, in many of our daily activities. Um, as you can see here on the graph, the, the desktop PCs growth and, and decline as we get into uh, 2011, how notebook PCs have also kind of ramped up dramatically but still declined a little bit, yet tablets are, you know, have this amazingly quick ramp up just, you know, in a period of about a year. Um, so let's talk about uh, mobile games monetization and global market share by region. So if we look at the different regions, clearly Asia Pacific has the highest at 48%. The second highest is North America, 24.5%. And the third highest is Western Europe. So what this speaks to is, is that a lot of the growth is in Asia Pacific but a lot of the monetization is still in the leading markets. So it's, you know, that's kind of the basis of what we're talking about today is kind of, you know, you can't, while you're focusing on growth markets, you still have to, to kind of pay attention to what the leading markets are doing. You know, from a top-down perspective, the U.S. is still the games capital of the world. It's the trend leader for games, people to look to the U.S. to see what are the new trends going to be. Uh, in 2013, it was almost $21 billion in total games revenue. That's digital and packaged goods product. Um, the mobile games revenue is about $160 million a month. 170 million Americans play games. 60% of those spend money doing so. So they're used to paying to play games. Um, 40 million Americans, or 20% of all U.S. gamers, play on all four screens. So that's TV. PC, smartphones, and tablets. And while growth is slowing in the US, its smartphone penetration is only 57%. So there's still lots of upside. All right, as you know, I think you just heard a talk on China. You know, China's um, mobile games market is expected to double this year to three billion, um, and it's on track to surpass US in uh, 2015. The other growth regions, India, Brazil, Indonesia, um, are also growing very rapidly. Uh, I, I, I don't know if people look at the populations of the various regions, but when you compare that Indonesia has 251 million to the US at 316 million, um, and their sub subscription growth rate for smartphones uh, last year was 42%, and this year is expected at 36%. I mean, you can see why these areas are going to be kind of the future of where all the growth is. Um, same with Brazil. Brazil's growth rate last year was at 38%, and this year is expected to be 30%. And India, you know, the big one at, you know, 55% smartphone subscription growth rate last year with a 45% growth rate this year. And compare that to the US where subscription growth this year is in the 12% range. All right, so we all know that monetization is challenging, right? Paying users are only 1.5% of your active user base. CPIs are higher than ARPU. So you know, you're paying more money than you're getting revenue per user. Um, app stores are really crowded. Discoverability is really difficult. Um, so 
how do you achieve success in a global gaming ecosystem? Um, so one of the things that we recommend is that you maximize distribution. You know, you've got your traditional app stores that kind of dominate, but there are lots of alternative distribution channels that, that, that should definitely be looked. Um, looking at a global reach is very important. So how can I um, maximize distribution with some type of global distribution channel that, that hits both emerging and leading markets? Um, and then obviously pay attention to market differences. You know, what are the local requirements? Um, you know, English works in Brazil and Singapore, but obviously it probably doesn't work in Germany. Um, you know, payment solutions vary dramatically around the world. U.S. people are very um, open to putting, you know, credit cards into, into apps and into, um, you know, to, into their PC. However, uh, you know, in other countries outside the U.S., people are very hesitant to put credit cards into to apps or to use their credit cards to buy premium games or in-app purchases. And you know, and what are their gaming habits? You know, obviously, casino games do very well in the U.S. and Latin America. Sports games do really well. So there's all these different kind of nuances that kind of affect what your distribution strategy is going to be and that you have to kind of consider these various variables whenever you want to optimize what your game's um, acquisition and monetization strategy is. All right, so let's talk about carriers. You know, carriers have um, kind of been, uh, you know, given a bad uh, situation over the last seven years. You know, they are, um, they have this huge distribution network. They own the out-of-box experience for their customers. They own the homepage real estate. They're localized for their regions, and they lost huge revenue streams when smartphones launched. So there's these big kind of giant behemoths that are really looking to kind of to, to build relevance again. Um, you know, obviously the launch of smartphones through them for a loop. You know, seven years ago when the, the, the iPhone launched, it, it took away a huge, huge revenue stream from them. Um, and, and, you know, they, they know that and, and they see that. Um, you know, so now they know that they're competing, competing with Google and Apple for both dollars and mind share. Um, they, you know, it's a fast changing digital landscape. A lot of the hierarchy and kind of the layers of carriers needs to be addressed in order for them to move quickly with, you know, to address, you know, ongoing innovation that's happening all the time. Um, so, you know, they have been working to kind of improve, you know, what their app store offering can be. And, you know, so then we pose the question, is there a need for a third app store? Um, so carriers can deliver a better mobile gaming experience. All right, so the current experience was launched seven years ago. If you're looking to improve on that, what would you do? So, okay, we say that discoverability is an issue. There's too many apps in all the traditional app stores. Maybe we focus just on games. Um, then you look at, okay, the, the social graph isn't necessarily integrated with the game store. How do we get it so that your friends can be involved in what games are recommended, what games you download, what games you play? Um, and, you know, how do we make that a bigger part of kind of your app store experience? How do we personalize it to what you want to play and what your friends want to play? Um, the other thing that, that, um, that they're able to do is, is that they're able to kind of look to see what games that you are playing and say, okay, if you like to play casino games, why don't you try these other casino games? Or if you like to play sports games, why don't you try these other sports games? So there's a whole kind of, you know, um, new generation of gaming that kind of adds a lot more functionality, a lot more engagement features than what currently exists out there. Um, they also offer one tap carrier billing, which uh, is basically when you purchase either a premium game or an in-app product, uh, the charge appears on your phone bill. So there's really no need for um, any credit cards. All right, so this is, um, this is a TV commercial 
of a uh, of an app store that one of Playphone's partners has launched in Singapore called WePlay. And this is um, Singtel's app store. So let me play this. We are taking your mobile gaming experience to a whole new level. WePlay personalizes your gaming experience, brings you a wide selection of new games, connects you to a global network, and lets you brag your higher scores to your friends. Make game purchases with Singtel. Download WePlay now to discover and play games together. So what, so what we're finding is, is that the Asian carriers, especially where, because smartphone growth and gaming growth is so, um, is so rapid, and they're so eager to capture part of that revenue stream that they're being very aggressive with their own app stores. And we know that traditional US carriers in the past have, have had issues and um, have maybe not, have, have been not as aggressive, but I think as, um, as, as we see the mobile gaming market mature, you know, they're ready to come back in and be aggressive in order to capture some of that share. And they also see that there's a need for more competition. I think, I think both users and game developers are looking for more distribution opportunities and ways to get their games to more people's hands. So, um, so what we do at Playphone is, is we do white label game solutions for carriers. It's their social game stores. It's a carrier gaming network. It was really built for gamers. Um, it's games only. It's very personalized because it's, there's recommendations. Um, and uh, we've tried to make it really easy for game developers to add their games to the network. Uh, it's social powered game discovery. So it's, it's the game store and the gaming network combined. So like I said, the social graph's available right from the very beginning. Um, and friends recommend what games you can play. And then you can invite, you can challenge, you can brag, you can share. There's a recommendation engine. There's also contextual messaging where you can get in-game and in-network chat. You can say, OK, I've hit a certain part of a game. And you're able to then chat with other people within that game about that certain part of the game. Um, as far as the monetization is concerned, it's, uh, there's a network currency that, um, it, that is being used by the various carriers. And they can, um, because it's a white label solution, they can either brand it themselves or they can use the, the, the play credits name. Um, and that currency is being used for subscription purposes, it's being used for IAPs, it's being used for premium games, um, as well as for other services. They're, you know, for example, in Singapore, they're using it for you know, music and video and, and loyalty and rewards programs. And um, they, they'll, you know, as soon as you download the App Store, they'll give you, you know, a thousand play coins in order to start playing games. So actually, game developers will get paid when users, when the carriers promote their games. Um, and it's also this one tap carrier billing where um, it's, you know, it's basically, you know, the, bill, the charges, like we said, to, um, appear right on the phone bill. So some of the early uh, conversion rates on the game stores, um, you know, that we're seeing is, is that there's definitely a much higher IA price. Um, in-app purchase price, as well in-app product price, I mean, as well as a higher conversion rate. Um, this is an actual case study from Verizon, uh, the Verizon game store. Uh, and um, we think that the, the carrier billing is a direct effect of this, um, as well as the social integration. So there is an opportunity to prove on the status quo. Um, the carrier game stores are currently live on these carriers. Uh, some of them are branded the carriers. Claro is, you know, Claro Games. Uh, on, on Verizon, it's games. Uh, on Sprint, it's Playphone Games. So the branding just depends on how the carrier wants to brand it, but they're all basically the same social game store. They all have the same features. They all connect to the same carrier gaming network. Um, and it reaches over a billion mobile subscribers. So we feel that that's a great, kind of one-of-a-kind monetization and distribution channel for games that, um, that doesn't exist at this point. Um, it's also non-exclusive. 
So if your game's on Google Play, you can add it to the Carrier Gaming Network, and it's just added distribution, added monetization opportunities. Um, and as you'll see, the SDK is, uh, you know, is less than 100K. Integration is really just a few lines. Um, it's all server side. Integration just happens once. You're able to distribute globally. It's a, uh, you know, it's one API call for all of the um, carrier billing for all of the game stores. Um, it's Android. Uh, HTML5 is the iOS component, um, as well as Unity. Um, and like I said, it's billing, social, and cloud features. So, uh, anyway, that's all. That's all we want to talk about. A new kind of opportunity for distribution and monetization for your games. Thanks. Thank you, John. Yeah. If I, I actually have one for you, sure. if if you had a limitation in resources, which markets would you pick? Well. Um, it, 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 it really doesn't make a difference because it's one integration and you distribute globally. So it, you know, you can, you can just, it, it depends on, like I said, if your game is English, uh, if you have a sports game, obviously it's gonna do better in certain areas, but kind of what the Carrier Gaming Network allows you to do is uh, it allows you to, to push it out in all these different areas, see where you're starting to get some traction and engagement, and then follow through, you know promoted. Um, the carriers are doing huge acquisition efforts, spending lots of, of, of money to bring users because it's their game store. The, the rev shares are, are very similar to what traditional app stores are. And um, so it's, uh, it's kind of like, you know, for us it feels like it's a no-brainer because you're just adding distribution, you're adding kind of additional monetization um, areas. There's, there's opportunities to be promoted in, you know, at brick and mortar at the carrier retail level. They're, you know, they do these huge, um, you know, traditional marketing campaigns that, you know, they're starting to use the, car the currency for phone upgrades or for, you know, get a payment plan. For example, Singtel um, is now starting to say, give out uh, virtual currency packages for, you know, various features that you, you, you choose. So it's, they're really, you know, the carriers are using this as kind of a loyalty building program. Cool. So. Thank you. Yeah. All right, thank Some you. More questions? Thank you so much, John. Thank you.